Welcome to this solution video. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up icon. Share this video with your friends. And if you subscribe, that will be an awesome support to make many more videos in future. Let's start with question number one. The scores of eight, eight highest scoring countries in 2019 Eurovision Song Contest are shown in below data. And if you can see, it is in decreasing order, right? Perfect decreasing order. A part for this data find upper quartile. So A part number one, we have to find upper quartile, which is also called Q3. Q3 is the median of the upper half. If I one, two, three, four, if I divide these data into upper four and lower four, the median of these four will be the Q3. And if there are four, how will I find the median? The, average of the middle two is called median. So Q3 will be 472 plus 370 divided by 2. So 842 divided by 2. And if I divide that 421 is Q3. That is the answer of number one. Number two, the IQ or interquartile range. IQR is Q3 minus Q1. Q3 we just found out 421. Q1 will be the median of the lower half. So the mean of these middle two. So Q1 is 331 plus 305 over 2 which will be 636 divided by 2, 318. So it is 318. So IQR will be Q3, 421 minus Q1, 318, 100, 103. This is IQR. Determine if Netherlands score is an outlier for this data. B part, let's do it here. For a data to be outlier, that data has to, have, has to be either uh, Q1 minus 1.5 IQR or Q3 plus 1.5 IQR or more. Okay, so Netherlands data, what is it? this is 498 here. So Q3, we'll have to look at this one. So Q3 is 421 plus 1.5 times 1. 0, 3. So half of this is how much? 51.5 plus this will be 54. 154.5. 421 plus 154.5, right? So which is 575. This data and above this are outliers and 498 is much much less than 575.5 so it is not an outlier. Done. B part is done. Okay, let's go to question number C part. Chester investigating the relationship between the highest scoring countries in Eurovision score and their population size to determine whether the population size can regionally be used to predict the country's score. The population of the countries to the nearest millions is this and this data is already with us. Chester finds that for this data, the Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient is R equal to 0 0.249. Stader whether it would be appropriate for Chester to use the equation of a regression line y on x to predict the country's Eurovision score. Okay, so we can say that no, uh, they're saying right, uh, use the equation, okay, no, he can't predict uh, Eurovision score because the relationship 
is weak you can write very weak 0.2 means it's very weak so we can't, we can't do it Chester then decides to find the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient for this data okay so we have this and uh, this will be of some use in part C write down the values of A B and C not part D it is part D right so looking at this we have to predict what is A B and C and their ranks okay so let's look at the previous ones and we can find it so 1 145 is the highest score yes 2 60 second 17 is third and then we have after third straight away seventh there is no four five six that means they should have four five six so after 17 which is the l next c 10 oh we have two tens which are both are unknown so we'll have to divide this Switzerland is nine okay so that means after three next are four or fifth but we can't say which one is four and which one is fifth right so we can write in that case 4.5 here and 4.5 here give the average of 4 and 5 for both okay so what is b switzerland sweden 4.5 b is 4.5 and c is also 4.5 after 10 we have 9 so we can call it 6 then we have 7 we have 8 okay so 6 4.5 and 4.5 these are the values 6 4.5 4.5 find the value of Spearman's crank correlation coefficient r okay so now we can uh, find the correlation coefficient from here for that i need to first find the difference in the ranks so 3 minus 1 i'll write absolute d okay doesn't matter if it's negative or positive we're going to square it later 3 minus 1 2 2 minus 2 is 0 1 minus 3 is minus 2 so difference is 2 6 minus 4 2 4.5 and 5 0 0.5 7 6 1 8 and 7 1 4.5 and uh, 8 3.5 okay so now next thing has to be d square and that's why i absolutely did this 2 square is 4 0 square is 0 and 4 again 4 again 0 0.2511 12.25 and i have to add all of them sigma d square that's what i need 4 4 4 12.25 13.25 14.25 14.5 26.5 that is sigma d square so now we have to find Spearman's rank correlation coefficient so it will be uh, 1 minus sigma uh, 6 sigma d square over n n square minus 1 so 1 minus 6 times uh, 26.5 5 over 8 times uh, 8 square 64 minus 1 comes out to be 0 0.6845 so 685 that's what we can write okay what is the next part it's asking interpret the value obtained for r we'll interpret this okay so we can interpret what does that mean so we can say that uh, there is a positive it is more than 0 0.5 so we can write it easily there is a positive uh, relation correlation rather between population size and uh, uh, rank eurovision rank euro vision score rank so there is no relationship between the population and uh, the score but the rank 
has a relationship with the population okay what next it says when calculating ranks chester incorrectly read the netherlands score 478 that means it was not 478 or what was it oh it was 498 right but they read this as 478 explain why the value of spearman's rank calculation does not change despite this error because the rank even if it is 478 still it is it is the top scorer in eurovision score so it does not many make any change uh, because uh, a reduction by 20 yeah for from 490 to 78 does not change the rank of netherlands that's why the coefficient correlation coefficient will remain same for this question number two a sector of a circle center o and radius 4.5 okay is shown in the following diagram i can see that find the angle a o b a o b this one all right so let's do what let's uh, find half of this angle this one only this one okay because we know one side 4 one side 4.5 here so we can find this angle let me redraw this here this is 4 this is 4.5 and let's call this angle x so uh, cos x is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse so x is cos inverse 4 over 4.5 since it is a circular measure i will use a uh, radian angle for this an angle aob that's what they're asking it'll be twice of this so 2 cos inverse 4 over 4.5 5 will be the answer if I use my calculator for this I get 0 0.9517 so let's write 952 this is the angle AOB find the area of the shaded segment this one all right so I will do what I will find the area of the sector and then I will subtract the area of the triangle white part from it and we will we'll be left with the shaded part, right? So let me write area of sector here. Area of sector is half r square theta and this theta has to be in radians, that's why I used radians here. So it will be half r is 4.5 square times 0.952 I will try to use my previous answer which was a long one which I rounded up to this so that uh, I get a proper value for this so times 4.5 divided by 2 9.6366 okay now I have to find the area of the triangle triangle a b o this a b o this triangle and the formula for that is half a b sine theta not sine yes yeah, sine theta so a and b are any two sides and theta is the angle between those two sides so this is 4.5 this is also a radius of 4.5 so we can write it as half 4.5 times 4.5 which is 4.5 square sine and the angle is 0 0.952 again 8.247 almost and we subtract this from 9.6366 we get 1.39389 that is 1.39 so area of a shaded part equal to 9.6366 minus 8.247 these are rounded off values I get about 
as what is the unit centimeter no meter can you see meter so meter square this is the area all right next a square field with side 8 okay has a go tied to a post in the center by a rope that is 4.5 meters okay find the area of the field that can be reached by the goat area of the field not outside and since this will be 4 can you see half of this 8 will be 4 that is if goat goes it will go out of this basically we'll get what shape we got in this first part same shape will be found so uh, we'll get a shaded area here correct similarly a shaded area here similarly here so this goat will go outside in four corners like this so what will we do we'll find the area of the circle the goat covers this is the circle it will cover right out of that we'll find four of these extra areas and we'll get the area of the field it is uh, reached by the goat okay so this area this is our b area of circle the circle of the goat minus the four times this area of 1.39 will give us that area so area of a circle is pi r square pi r square r is 4.5 by the goat's rope minus 4 times 1.39 which will be so almost if i round it off 58.1 meter square area if we subtract the four shaded parts let V be the volume of grass eaten by goat in cubic meters and T is the time in hours that goat has been on the field. The goat eats the grass at the rate of this. Okay. So as time passes because it is, time is positive and this is exponential, it will not be a straight line. It will be a variable uh, grass eating. Find the value of t at which the goat is eating grass at greatest rate. Okay, we want greatest rate. Whenever we want greatest or smallest of something, we first differentiate it. Okay, so it is already differentiated. We will differentiate once more to find the greatest because this uh, gradient at the greatest and smallest is zero. So we'll make it equal to zero. So uh, d square v over dt square will be 0 0.3 is a constant so 0 0.3 remains 0 0.3 and t e to the power t e to the power minus t they are multiplying so we'll use product rule in this let me do them inside we'll differentiate t but we will not differentiate e to the power minus t plus we will not differentiate t but we will differentiate e to the power minus t that's product rule. So it will be 0 0.3 t prime. The difference, uh, differentiation of t is 1. So e to the power minus t only. Plus t e to the power minus t. But further, we differentiate the exponent, which is minus 1 in this case. So e to the power minus t is common in both so let's bring it out 0 0.3 remains here e to the power minus t also comes out and we are left with 1 in this case and this was minus minus and this is already out t so it will be equal to 0 for greatest it has d square v over dt square has to be equal to 0 because the rate we're talking about the rate okay greatest rate not uh, greatest amount of volume of uh, grass it is eating. So either this is 0, 0 0.3 e to the power minus t equal to 0 or 1 minus t is equal to 0. 0 0.3 cannot be 0, e to the power minus t can never be 0 because e is a constant and that constant's power will never give you a 0. Exponential is never 0 so this answer is rejected, it won't give us anything. This gives us t equal to one second so 
Question was find the value of t at which the goat is eating grass at the greatest rate when it started eating one second after that it was eating at the fastest rate. Okay. Question number Okay, no. We have goat is tied in the field for 8 hours. Okay? Find the total volume of the grass eaten by the goat. So, we will have to do it here. Now, they are asking volume of the grass. That is V has to be found from this. So, dV over dt is equal to 0.3 e t e to the power minus t. So, can we write this as uh, dV equal to 0.3 t e to the power minus t dt. So, dt went and joined the other side and we can integrate this to find the volume now and they're saying 8 hours so it will be from 0 to 8 hours so integration of dv is v volume that's what we want and this 0 0.3 i can keep out and let's see what is the integration of t to the power t minus one minus t so uh we can see this is algebraic this part uh, t and e to the power minus t is uh, exponential. So if I look at how we do it, exponential and uh, this algebra. So u algebra will be u and exponential will be v prime. That means uh, let's write here t is equal to u and e to the power minus t is equal to v. And our question here, this one, is if I look at only this part, not 0 0.3 because it's a constant and already taken out. So I will look at that only. So t e to the power minus t will be following uh, integration by part where u uh, v prime we have, right? u v prime integration will be equal to u v minus u prime v. We just found, we just assume that t is u and this is v, so not v, v prime, v prime, right? All right, v prime. So u we know, which is t, but we don't know v, we know v prime, so we'll have to integrate e to the power minus, let's integrate this to get v. So integration of this will be e to the power minus t itself divided by minus 1, which is minus in front here and v. So V is minus e to the power minus T. So U T and this is minus e to the power minus T. We got U V. Now minus integration of U prime. If U is T then U prime will be the differentiation of T which is 1. And then V. We just got v minus e to the power minus t dt all right so equal to 0 0.3 uh, this negative i can take uh, in front here minus t e to the power minus t this minus and this minus will make it positive and integration of e to the power minus t left because one is useless here so e to the power minus t again, okay, minus e to the power minus t again, plus c. Okay, so we have negative here, we have negative here, let's take negative also out, negative 0 0.3. And, uh, all right, now we have to substitute 0 and 8, yeah? So let's put uh, e to 8 first, so minus 8 e to the power minus 8 and this was minus e to the power minus oh sorry I took minus common so it should be plus here I took minus how oh, with 0 0.3 here okay so uh, minus 8 plus c minus now I have to substitute 0 here 0 times e to the power 0 plus e to the power 0 plus again okay because negative is out I have made little complicated this one but 
I'm very careful. Hopefully I'll get it right. E equal to this is V e equal to minus 0 0.3 is out. And here I will use my calculator to evaluate this. So 8 times e to the power minus 8 plus e to the power minus 8 minus this is 0 1 minus 1 so I get minus 0 0.9969 okay this C was having a C here so this got cancelled out okay so don't ignore it so that has to be multiplied with negative 3 negative 0 0.3 0 0.299 so e equal to 0 0.299 meter meter cube this is the volume of grass the goat ate in eight hours okay question number three now okay question number three says the principal, a principal would like to compare the students in his school with a national standard. He decides to give a test to eight students made up of four boys and four girls. One of the teachers offers to find the volunteers from his class. Name the type of sampling. Okay. So this sampling uh, is called, uh, but volunteer cannot be called. Why? Because there are four boys and four girls we have selected four boys and four girls so we can name this as uh, quota sampling we have given four spaces to boys and four spaces to girls the mark out of 40 for the students who took the test are these for the eight students find the mean mark okay for mean mark i have to add all of them and divide by eight that's simple so 25 plus 29 plus 38 plus 37 plus 12 plus 18 plus divide by 8 54 and 94 37 39 27 2 217 over 8 which will be times 2 okay this is the mean score the standard deviation of the mark we have to find standard deviation also that is second part of the same in this case we will use standard SD right so standard deviation will be sigma x square over n minus and this 27.125 mean square the end will find square root of that also so we have to square all of them and then divide by 8 minus this and square root that's what i'm going to do by the time i use my calculator to do this long calculation i would request you to hit that thumbs up icon like this video, share with your friends and please, please, please subscribe to this channel. My subscribers are not increasing at the intended rate. Thank you so much. This is 6437 over 8 minus 27.125 square, square root and it came out to 8.29815. So we can round this off to 8.30. This is the standard deviation. Okay. The national standard mark is 25.2 out of 40. Perform the appropriate test at 5% significance level to see if the mean mark achieved by the students in the school are higher than national standard. It can be assumed that the marks come from normal a normal population. Okay, since the sample size is less than 30, we have just 8 samples, 8 of them. So we will use t-test for this. So uh, C, we decide to have t-test. Alright, so for t-test we need uh, the calculator. Let me open the calculator right now. Okay, so we'll go to start. 
and then t test and i have entered all the things here this is the mean of the data means the population whole population this is for the sample 27.125 sx the standard deviation of the sample is 8.29815 n is 8 and uh, what else do we need to oh, we know want if it is more than this and we get here p value is 0 0.2663 t value is this so we need only p value for this 2663 so conducting p uh, value came out to be 2663 so what is the question they're asking so 0 0.2663 is much more than the significance level of 5 percent 0 0.05 so uh, we fail to reject null hypothesis which was uh, the students in the school are higher than national standards so uh, scores of students in this school in school higher scores are higher than national standard this hypothesis we keep we don't have enough evidence to uh, reject it okay what about d part d part says state one reason why the test might not be valid okay so because we selected boys and girls we uh, limited their numbers and they were not random some teacher said see teacher offers to find volunteers so we took volunteers so this one's not random so be because sample selection was volunteer not random that could be the reason this test may not be valid two additional students take the test at a later date and mean mark for all students is 28.1 it was 27 point something 2125 this one earlier now it is 28.1 the standard deviation is 8.4 now which was 8.3 earlier for further analysis a standardized score out of 100 for the 10 students is obtained by multiplying the score by 2 and adding 20 multiplying by 2 and adding 20 for 10 students find their mean standard standardized score let's try to understand it this way so suppose this is the mean visual way okay this is mean and that mean is 28.1 they said each for standardizing each score was multiplied by 2 and then 20 was added to it that means if a data was here it was doubled and then plus 20 was uh, done means 20 was added to it right so whenever we do some same thing with each data the same effect comes to the mean also so the new mean standardized mean will be 2 times 28.1 plus 20 so 56.2 plus 20 which is 76.2 this will be the new mean okay to make it out of 100 because earlier it was out of 40 now it is 76.2 is out of 100 what about standard deviation adding 20 does not change standard deviation what about multiplying multiplying will effect it's here 8.4 8.4 this doubling of each data will elongate the distance between the mean and the data yes so standard deviation will be doubled which is 16.8 right but this plus 20 will not have any effect because mean also goes up by 20 each data will also go up by 20 by the same margin uh, after being doubled 
that means the distance between them will be the only effect by doubling not by adding 20 so this will be the new standard standardized uh, this is standardized uh, standard deviation okay let's go to the next question number four okay question number four a particle moves such that its displacement x meters from point O at time t seconds is given by this differential equation. A part 1 says use the substitution y equal to dx over dt. This dx over dt will be y. So if dx over dt is y, that means the second derivative of this, which is d square x over dt square, will be dy over dt both differentiated with respect to t again and that's what it is so this equation becomes dy over dt equal to not uh, let's write plus 5y plus 6x equal to 0 so can I write this as dy over dt equal to negative 5y Let, let's write x first because they want x first right so we will write x first let me undo this so negative 6x negative 5y okay so look here dy if i want the lower one it will be minus 6x minus 5y we got this equation already here let me erase this part first and then expand. Okay, if I expand this one, it will be zero, 0 times x, which is 0. And then 1 times y is y. Minus 6 times x is minus 6x. Minus 5 times y is minus 5y. That means the x component of top one is equal to dx over dt which is correct here dx over dt is y dx over dt is equal to y and dy over dt is minus 6x minus 5y we have shown this here as well okay number two find the eigenvalues for the matrix 0 1 minus 6 minus 5 this is what we will do now and for that let me write it here i want eigenvalue for uh, 0 negative 6 1 negative 5 so let's call it matrix A so we want to convert is this matrix A into lambda I a lambda multiple which is uh, eigen values multiplied with a unit matrix so a minus lambda i is equal to 0 so we can write a now this one 0 1 negative 6 negative 5 minus lambda i will be uh, 1 0 0 1 because this is 2 by 2 matrix so same will write here will be equal to 0 0 okay and our purpose is to find this eigen value okay so if we combine these two it becomes 0 minus lambda minus 6 1 minus 5 minus lambda equal to 0 0 okay so the matrix this matrix will be how much well, this first minus lambda minus 5 minus lambda minus negative 6 times 1 is negative 6 is equal to 0 so we get what positive 5 lambda positive lambda square plus 6 is equal to 0 so lambda square plus 5y plus 6 equal to 0 lambda plus 3 I'm doing it direct you can use calculator if you want I know how it will look like so this so lambda equal to negative 3 from here and lambda is equal to minus 2 from here and question was 
find the eigenvalues for the matrix, we found the eigenvalues for this matrix. Hence, state the long-term velocity of the particle. Uh, we can see there that the eigenvalues here are both negative. That means if there are some, the, if we look at the vectors, eigenvectors, uh, because of these negative, they will approach towards origin, both of them. Even if it is negative, negative means it's coming towards origin. So in long term, we will approach zero. So since they're saying, hence state the long term velocity of the particle, number three, long term velocity will be zero, right? Because of these eigenvalues. Okay, the equation for the motion of the particle is amended. So it is still the same, the left side. Right side, in place of zero, it is 3t minus 4. As the time changes, this differential equation changes. All right. So what is the question they're asking? Use the substitution y equal to dx over dt. Same thing again to write the differential equation as a system of coupled first order differential equation. Okay. So since they have already given us the start, we will do the way they want. Okay. This is b. So they're saying y is equal to dx over dt. That means d square x over dt, which is the another second derivative of this, next one will be same as dy over dt. Correct? So uh, the first part, this one, d square x, the uh, difference, new differential equation. first order, okay, will be d square x over dt will be dt square, will be replaced by dy over dt. Okay, then plus 5, dx over dt is y, plus 6x, plus, sorry, equal to 3t minus 4. Okay, this is what we will write. Now, when t is zero, the particle is stationary. Okay, so the second part of B says when t is zero, particle is stationary. That means dx over dt, the speed, velocity, or y is also zero. And stationary at A, that means x is also zero. The displacement is also zero all three at the same time, okay? Use Euler's uh, method with a step length of 0 0.1 to find the displacement of the particle when t is equal to one, okay? So that means we want step length of 0 0.1. That means we will start with zero, then we'll go to 0 0.1, then 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 and so on, we will go up to t equal to 1. So, uh, here we can write uh, t n plus 1 is equal to, rather let me, because I have to use calculator, uh, let me use t n. t n is equal to previous t time plus 0 0.1. Next, there will be an equation for x n x n will be x n minus 1, yeah, which is the previous position plus 0 0.1 time times the velocity it is moving with, right? And velocity is dx over dt, which we can write as y n minus 1, whatever is the velocity previously times the time difference, the uh, step length we have taken, we will multiply that one. What about y n? And for yn, we'll use the equation we just got here. This is the rate at which y is changing. So we will write y n minus 1 plus 0 0.1 times the rate at which it is changing. So let's isolate it here. dy over dt equal to 3t minus, is it minus? It was positive here. Plus 
4 this is plus 4 minus 5y minus 6x these two also taken to the right side so we'll write them here now 3t n minus 1 plus 4 minus 5 y n minus 1 minus 6 x n minus 1 these are the three equations which we will input in our calculators to find uh, the use Euler's method of step lengths of 0 0.1 okay so uh, let's open the calculator now we will use uh, the mode of sequence here okay and for that we need y equal to button and I have already entered this one u is t actually v is x for us and w is y so if you see it is exactly same u n is equal to t n minus 1 plus 0 1 I write u n minus 1 plus 0 0.1 we're starting from 0 yeah t is 0 and v uh, x is also 0 and y is also 0 so I wrote v w and x minimum value 0 and then xn is xn minus 1 plus 0 0.1 wn minus 1 so w is y so exactly same what I've written here is I have copied here right so let's see table set for this now we start with 0 and end with 1 okay good let's go to table all right so we get the table here and we can see that we we are starting from 0 and then we have to go to 1 2 3 we have to go to up to n which is 10 for us right but since we have taken one extra so let's move on to 11 because uh, we are going one backwards so in place of see uh, t n plus 1 x n plus 1 y n plus 1 i'm using just n's that means we have to go one extra mile and we have to go to 11 in place of 10 because 11th will reach at t n equal to 1 can you see here it is 1 at 11 so this is our they're saying displacement if you look at the question question again use Euler's method with the step length of 0 0.1 for find the displacement and displacement is xn xn is uh, vn in this case so 6 uh, 6 4 4 this if I convert this to calc uh, decimals it will be 0 0.64402 so this is going to be our answer x at 1 will be 0 0.64402 so we can stop at this one only find the long term velocity of the particle for that let's go to the calculator again and uh, in, plate of, uh, in place of auto let's write ask and we'll go to a very high value for n so table set again now table and if I put n equal to 100 I put a very high value you can see that time becomes 99 over 10 is about 9.9 .9. if there is a draw, uh, jump of 0 0.1 seconds every time it will be 9.9 .9 seconds and the displacement will be 0 0.599 if I convert this to decimal and velocity speed that's what they're asking right long term velocity will be 0 0.5 can you see this number divided by this number will be 0 0.5 if I convert that to s on decimals it will be 0 0.5 if it is converted to decimal so the answer will be 0 0.5 for third part in long term velocity equal to 0 0.5 uh, units per second okay Question 5. The aircraft for a particular flight has 72 seats. The airline's records show that historically for this flight only 90% of the people who purchase a ticket arrive to board the flight. They assume this trend will continue and decide to sell extra tickets 
and hope that no more than 72 people arrive for the flight. The number of passengers that arrive to board this flight is assumed to follow the binomial distribution, okay, with a probability of 0 0.9, okay. So probability P is 0 0.9, so Q will be 1 minus P, 0 0.1. Part A, the airline sells 74 tickets for this flight. Find the probability that more than 72 passengers arrive to board the flight. Okay, so uh, we want a probability that, uh, is there a variable? Let's say variable is X, more than 72 people arrive for the flight. So more than 72 are 73 and 74 which is probability of uh, x equal to 73 plus probability of x equal to 74 which can be written as 74 yeah they sell 74 tickets they, we want to uh, see that 73 people come for this so 0 0.9 to the power 73 and 0 0.1 plus 74 c 74 0.9 to the power 74 and 0 0.10 0, which when uh, we use our calculator we get this and uh, 0 0041098 and total is 0 0.037912 so if we want to express in decimal places 0 0.00379 this will be the probability that more than 72 people will arrive for the flight okay b part write down the expected number of passengers who will arrive to board the flight if 72 tickets are sold 72 tickets so they said 90 percent arrive so b1 will be 90 percent of 72 which will be 9 0 0.9 times 72 will be 8 or 64.8 okay number two Find the maximum number of tickets that can be, could be sold if uh, expected number of passengers who arrive on to board the flight must be less than or equal to 72. That means up to 72. We have to get that 72 should be the 90% of those number of tickets sold. Let me call it T. So it will become 72 times 10 divided by 9 which is 80 tickets 80 tickets are to be sold so that 72 or less people arrive to board the flight each passenger pays 150 for a ticket if too many passengers arrive then airlines will give 300 in compensation to this uh, extra per passenger right okay see find to the nearest integer the expected number of increase or decrease in money made by the line if they decide to sell 74 tickets rather than 72 okay so that means they can sell uh, 72 or 73 and 74 so uh, it can be less than or equal to 72 there are three possibilities they sold 74 tickets okay what is the price of 74 tickets let's write here see the price of 74 tickets it will be 74 and each one cost 150 so it will be 74 times 150 will be triple one zero zero 11,100 this is their price okay now let's see what is the expected value so first we just need to know probability less than equal to 72 did we get any 
it was greater than 72 that means so uh, we can use this one so that will be 1 minus 0 0.00379 whatever is that that is the probability right and this is the x value which means number of people arrive actually so suppose 73 people arrive what is the probability of having 73 and uh, 73 was here this one here it was 0 0.00338014 and 74 is 0 0.00411098 if 72 or less arrive they don't have to give anyone any money okay so for 72 people we will find what they will still pay okay one you sold Full tickets, right? So if two people did not come, you are not going to refund them because they did not come, their fault. Now, 73 will be still you got 1100, this 11,100, right? It's in your kitty. But because one person has come extra, you have to pay that person $300, right? So your earning will be 10,800 only this is y value for this one here there was no loss but if 74 people come you have to pay $600 as compensation so that will be 10,500 question is uh, find the to the nearest the expected increase or decrease let's say uh, the total earning first and then we'll decide whether it, it is an increase or decrease okay so expected value of y the earning will be uh, 1 minus 0 0.0039 yeah this is the probability that they will get 1 1 1 double 0 plus uh, 0 0.0033814 multiplied by the amount in that case 10800 there is this is the probability multiplied by the value they are getting and third one is 0 0.00411098 multiplied by 10,500 just put this in a calculator and you get your answer let me do it myself by the time I do this I would request you to like this video hit that thumbs up button share this video with your friends and please subscribe to this channel it takes a lot of effort to solve these exams and prepare videos, edit them and upload for you guys. Thank you very much. After many times calculation with the calculator, I got 11137.69. Okay, let me read this one. So it is a quite high number as compared to marking scheme. Some of you will comment, oh, it is different from the marking scheme, but this is what I got. I am not agreeing with the marking scheme so uh, the profit the difference in earning will be 11 3 7 let, let me call 3 8 okay minus uh, original if they would have sold 72 this would be their uh, collection right 72 tickets and 150 each this will be 10,800 so it will be 338 they will earn more 338 dollars if they sell 74 tickets okay consider the curve y equal to square root x find dy over dx nothing could be easier than this dy over dx we have to differentiate y so y equal to x to the power half that's what we can write so dy over dx is going to be half x to the power half minus 1 and uh, that will be half x to the power negative half or 1 over 2 square root x because this comes down and becomes positive hence show that the equation of the tangent to the curve at the point this one is this so part 2 equation of 
tangent since it is y equal to mx plus c format i will use the same format y equal to mx plus c uh, m is the gradient of tangent at this point at this point we see x is 0 0.16 and that is the value i'm going to use m at x equal to 0 0.16 so it is nothing but this uh, this is m so it will be 1 over 2 square root 0 0.16 in place of x it will be 0 0.4 1 over 0 1 over 0 0.8 which is 1.25 we got m now next thing is to find c to find c just plug in the point we have this is the point known to us we'll plug it in here and we'll get c so y in this point is 0 0.4 so i'm using basically this equation 0 0.4 is equal to m is known to us 1.25 now x is 0 0.16 at that point and c is uh, the uh, the constant we're trying to find out which is y intercept so 0 0.4 and this will be uh, 0 0.2 yeah, equal to 0 0.2 plus c 1.25 times 0 0.16 is 0 0.2 let's bring it here 0 0.4 minus 0 0.2 is equal to c and c becomes 0 0.2 so our final equation this format is y equal to m which is 1.25 x and c which is 0 0.2 which matches exactly with what they want okay the shape of a piece of metal can be modeled by the region bound by F which is uh, they have not given an equation have they no okay G is second second uh, function the x-axis this one and the line segment AB okay they have shown it properly as shown in the diagram the unit on the x and y axis are measured in meters they are in meters all right the piecewise function is this between 0 and 0 0.16 so this function up to here is square root x which we just did here then 1.25x plus 0 0.2 a linear function tangent to this basically this second part is tangent to the first part that's what they're trying to say this is what we got right here okay from 0 0.16 to 0 0.5 which is here this line they're talking about the graph g is obtained from the graph f by a stretch factor of half means we uh vertical a stretch scale factor half in x direction okay so whenever there is a stretch factor of half in x direction that means the function will be f x not not f x this time g x so g x is equal to root 2 x uh, this is half stretch factor is half but when it is in x direction we write reciprocal of it inside the function which i've done here followed by a scale factor of half in the y direction but in y direction we write half as half and it is outside the function so outside square root 2x followed by a translation of 0 0.2 units to the right going to the right this direction we get a subtraction so minus 0 0.2 inside here all right point a lies on the graph f point a lies on the graph f okay and coordinates are these point b lies on the uh, is the image of a under given transformations here okay has pq find the value of okay let's show him find the values of p and the value of q okay to find a uh, let's say p is a reflection of x right image of 
x so p will be x over k minus d okay what is k k is the coefficient of x which is 2 in this case so it will be x what was the original x x was 0 0.5 right in a so 0 0.5 divided by k k is 2 minus d and whatever is d d is negative 0 0.02 0 0.2 so this will be 0 0.25 plus 0 0.2 which is 0 0.45 similarly q for q it will be a y plus c what is a a is the coefficient of the whole function which is half in this case so half what was the y coordinate of the original one? 0 0.825 plus c and there is no plus here. After this whole function there is no vertical translation only horizontal translation in x direction was there so this is the only one which will be uh, 0 0.4125 so we got it p is equal to 0 0.45 and q is 0 0.41 okay we have next part also for this which is the piecewise function g is given by hx so that particular function is also in two parts so from 0 0.2 to certain place it is hx okay and because this is that curved graph here that means hx is what we got for gx okay and an expression for hx and that will be uh, hx equal to half square root 2x minus 0 0.2 this is what we got right yes that is what the one the value of a so it is applicable to certain value a how can we find that one 1 1.25 should be the gradient at that place yes because after that it is connecting with this for differentiating let's write hx as half and open the bracket inside 0 0.4 to the power half Yes, square root means power half, right? I simplified this as this so that it is easier to differentiate. So now I will differentiate this. Half is half. This half will also come in front. Then we have 2x minus 0 0.4. And the exponent goes down by 1. And further we have to multiply by the what is the differentiation of the content. Differentiation of 2x is 2. Differentiation of negative 0 0.4 will be 0, so just 2 we write here. So this 2 can cancel with one of the 2's. So what do we get? Half and uh, 2x minus 0 0.4 to the power minus half. This gradient at point A has to be equal to 1.25. That's what we decided. So 1.25. So let's get rid of this 2 also so that we are left with nothing here. So this half and 2 cancel and 2 times 1.25 will be 2.5 equal to uh, 2 and now x is a for us, right? They are asking us to find the value of a. So we'll substitute a here minus 0 0.4 to the power minus half. Our target is to find a so let's get rid of the exponent first by giving it an exponent of minus 2 so that minus 2 times minus half will be 1 they cancel out right so I have to give the same exponent to the other side so 25 2.5 to the power minus 2 equal to equal to 2a minus 0 0.4 let me uh, write 2.5 to the power minus 2 plus 0 0.4 is equal to 2a so let's see what is 2.5 to the power minus 2 0 0.16 so 0 0.16 plus 0 0.4 equal to 2a 0 0.56 equal to 2a 
divide by 2 so a is uh, 0 0.28 we got the value of a as 0 0.28 they're saying find the value of a done the value of b also we have to find value of b and let's see if 0 0.28 is making sense with our graph 0 0.28 somewhere here will be 0 0.28 right it makes sense that it is curved till here and after that is a line can you see that y value will be same for the line as well as curve here so y value will equate 1.25 x plus b will be equal to hx so that will be the y value at both the one both the places so let me use this space so uh, hx was this yeah so we already have a now so we'll substitute that here half two times 0 0.28 minus 0 0.4 to the power half will be equal to 1 point x x is 0 point 28 and then plus b we have to find b so half 2 times 0 0.28 will be 0 0.56 minus 0 0.4 will be 0 0.16 and let's bring this also here 1.25 times uh, 0 0.28 14 0 0.07 0 0.35 equal to b and simply we can find square root of 0 0.16 will be 0 0.4 divided by 2 is 0 0.2 so 0 0.2 minus 0 0.35 equal to 0 0.1 sorry negative 0 0.15 this is the value of b got it what else they're asking they're asking find the area enclosed by fx x-axis and the line 0 0.5 so fx is this one x-axis is this one and 0 0.5 is this one this area they're asking the whole area the shaded one and this white one together will be the one so basically we'll find the area under this curve one well, let's let's do this one in two parts this is a trapezoid can you see here it is trapezoid so let's find the area of this trapezoid first the area of trapezoid will be a uh, first parallel line this one from this point till x-axis which is 0 0.4 so 0 0.4 plus second parallel line which is this one which is uh, 0 0.825 divided by 2 and multiplied by the height between them height between these two will be uh, 0 0.5 minus 0 0.16 that is this distance from here till no not here not here yes here only that means i took this point wrongly it was this point anyways multiplied by 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 minus 0 0.616 will be 0 0.34 so let's find out what is this equal to. I can cancel 2 and 0 0.34. 0 0.2, 0 0.20825. 0 0.20825. This is the area of the trapezoid. Now we have to find the area under this curve, which is simple. F is equal to square root x. So we have to integrate from 0 to 0 0.16. That is the x value square root x x to the power half and dx so it will be x to the power half plus 1 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2 plus c from 0 till 0 0.16 which will be 2 times 0 0.16 to the power 3 over 2 over 3 plus c minus 
since we are substituting 0 second time but 0 to the power anything will be 0 so this is 0 plus c here and c and c cancel this is the one we'll get which will be uh, 0 0.16 to the power 3 to will be 0 0.4 to the power cube 0 0 6 0 6 4 2 times 0 0.064 divided by 3 so 2 times 0 0.064 divided by 3 that is 0. 0 0.0427 let's add it here 0 0.0427 so we are getting uh, 0 0.24 this was 2 right so 5 0 5 okay so three signal figures we can write 0 0.251 square units okay what else they're asking now they're asking the area enclosed by the gx x axis and line x equal to p 0 0.0627 whatever that is okay correct to six signal figures find the area of the shaded region in the diagram that means this whole area we just found out which was 0 0.25 actually is 25095 and more of these out of that this white part is already given to us this one which we will remove to get this shaded area what else we have to remove we have to remove this small area which is a trapezoid again so let's find the area of trapezoid 2 so let me make space here so it is easier so trapezoid 2 or say first parallel line is this one which is q did we get q here okay here we got 0 0.4125 okay 0 0.4125 parallel line 2 is this long line which is 0 0.825 add them divide by 2 and multiply it by the height between them which is this distance did you get p we got p earlier p was 0 0.45 yeah so 0 0.45 and 0 0.5 what is the distance between them this small distance will be 0 0.05 so 0 0.05 okay so just put this in a calculator and we get it it comes out to be 0 0.030937 as close as possible and now to find the final final we will use 0 0.2509 let me write them one by one patiently okay so this is the answer of the shaded region this i'm doing here 0 0.02509 yeah 5 also minus 0. Point, we have to subtract this area 0 0.309375 minus 0. 0.030975 if I write 0 0.309375 and the one they have given we have to subtract this also 0 0.0627292 let's put this whole in our calculator and we'll get our answer by the time I calculate this I would request you to hit that thumbs up icon to appreciate the hard work i'm doing to prepare this video for you and please subscribe to my channel that will be awesome so i got 0 0.1572833 and to three significant figures it will be 0.157 one mistake i made here was this was not a zero here i realized A transformation T of a plane is represented by this where P is a 2 by 2 matrix this P okay and Q is 2 by 1 matrix vector okay 
r is the position vector of a point in the plane and r pr r dash the position vector of its image okay the triangle oab has these coordinates under t t transformation this one these points are transformed to this 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 respectively a by considering the image 0 0 find q yeah, 0 0 is the best because uh, enlargement or multiplication will not affect 0 0 that is is the best way so let's do it a part 1 so uh, p is a uh, 2 by 2 matrix so let's call it a b c and d and then uh, we have the r vector which is 0 0 in this case we will write 0 0 then plus q and q is also unknown uh, vector 2 by 1 so we will call it uh, ef okay and after this vector is transformed with this and this it becomes 0 1 yeah so we'll write 0 1 here now let's try to simplify this one so a multiplied by 0 is 0 plus b multiplied by 0 is also 0 so it becomes 0 and similarly c times 0 d times 0 so 0 0 plus e f is equal to 0 and 1 0 0 is nothing so it gives us e equal to 0 f equal to 1 and that gives us our q which was e this e f was q right so we got q equal to 0 1 itself number 2 by considering the image of 1 0 1 0 is this one so we got this is the one and 0 1 show that p is this okay so let's use 1 0 first uh, a b c d and this time we have 1 0 first so 1 0 plus e f now we know q which is 0 1 so we will write 0 1 we will not write e f anymore and the image of uh, 1 0 which is the last one is square root 3 over 4 and 3 over 4 okay so now let's multiply a times 1 is a b times 0 is 0 so i'm not writing it c times 1 is c d times 0 is 0 so i'm not writing it plus 0 1 equal to square root 3 over 4 3 over 4 okay so a c this 0 1 will go to the other side so it becomes square root 3 over 4 3 over 4 minus 0 1 which is square root 3 over 4 minus 0 is square root 3 over 4 and 3 fourth minus 1 will be negative 1 fourth so we got our a a and c okay these are a and c let's go to uh, the other one yeah now we'll use zero one so uh, this is our second step so a b c d again but a and c is known to us now we can if you want you can write it though it is of no use but we will write it minus one fourth so we got a and c b and d will are unknown so we will write them b and d and the point we have to use is zero one and its image is zero one is here this is the second one so it is one fourth first we have to write plus or zero one equal to one fourth and one plus square root three over four again we'll bring this to the right one to the right and this will multiply see square root 3 or 4 times 0 is 0 so this was of no use if i would have written a and b a and c that would be the same but still i will prefer this b times 1 will be 
this times 0 is 0, d times 1 is d, equal to 1 fourth, 1 plus square root 3 over 4 minus 0, 1. So b and d, 1 fourth minus 0 is 1 fourth. And 1 and minus 1 will be cancelled out, so we'll be right with only square root 3 over 4. We got B and D only. Let's collect A, B, C, D. Now P becomes A and C. We got A and C as square root 3 over 4 and minus 1 fourth. And B and D, we just got it 1 fourth and square root 3 over 4. And which exactly matches with the P they have given here. Look. Here. Okay. Now, let's talk about the next one. P can be written as P equal to RS. Okay. This P can be written as RS. Where S and R are matrices. S represents an enlargement with a scale of 0 0.5 center 0 0 okay so scale is 0. Point, so we can write s equal to 0. 0.5 can i multiply this with a unit matrix like this so if 0. 0.5 multiplies with this it becomes 0. 0.5 0 0 0. 0.5 and now it is a matrix because they said s is a matrix and we have to write matrix s which can be written as this one okay what is c part one p is equal to r s to find the matrix r we have to use this and p is this one okay s is this one so we can use this in place of p we will write its value 3 square root 3 over 4 minus 1 fourth 1 fourth square root 3 over 4 equal to r is another matrix and let's call that matrix as uh, u v w and x okay and s we just got s 0 0.5 0, 0, 0 0.5. So let's uh, expand or multiply these two matrices here. U multiplied by 0 0.5 is 0 0.5 U. And then V multiplied by 0 is 0. Right? Then U multiplied by 0 is 0. V multiplied by 0 0.5 is 0 0.5 V. Similarly, W multiplied by 0 0.5 plus 0, 0 plus 0 0.5 X. These are the ones which is equal to square root 3 over 4 minus 1 fourth, 1 fourth square root 3 over 4. And now we can compare one by one. Let's compare the first character here with this one. So square root 3 over 4 is equal to 0 0.5 u so u becomes uh, this multiplies here so square root 3 over 4 times 0 0.5 will be 2 you got u let's talk about the second one 1 fourth is equal to 0 0.5 v 1 fourth equal to 0 0.5 v so v becomes 0 0.5 multiplies with 4 1 over 2 W uh, negative one fourth negative one fourth equal to zero point five W multiplies again W is negative half and the negative square root three over four is equal to zero point five X so X is square root three over two so we got this was our matrix R, U, V, W, X, and that's what we're going to write now. Matrix R is U, square root 3 over 2, V, half, and W, 
minus half and square root 3 over 2 found it what was the question second part hence find the angle and direction of the rotation represented by r okay so if it is clockwise or anti clock first of all let's see which same angle same angle gives this value for sine and cos okay so this has to be cos so it is uh, let me write here with different color cos 30 right this is sine 30 this is minus sine 30 and this is a uh, cos 30 again right so this reminds us of what what uh, has this formula cos sine and minus sine cos it is clockwise so clockwise rotation by because it is uh, this square root 3 over 2 is cos 30 that means cos inverse square root 3 over 2 is 30 so we will write 30 degrees it is a clockwise rotation okay what is the next part of this question the transformation t can also be described by an enlargement scale of factor half at center a b followed by a rotation about the same center a b okay transformation t and transformation t was uh, p r plus q okay so since it is also an enlargement of factor half which was here also scale factor 0 0.5 which was here then there is a rotation also there is a rotation about a b this only 0 0 has become a b that's what they're trying to say so what are they asking d part one write down an equation satisfying a b so originally it was r prime equal to p r plus q so d question part one uh, i will not write it here r prime equal to p r plus q this was the one and both of them have same uh, uh, same effect t would be r prime let's say uh, that what are these new okay let's say x y not x we have already used x here right so let me use y and z y prime and z prime these are the images p and our original point was y z whose image will be y prime and z prime but it was with respect to zero zero when we use this the the original point was zero zero but now we have a b they have given a b so we have to get how far it is from a b right so this is what we will do in place of original r and then because it is also uh, having a rotation about a b so a b has to be added because earlier our point of rotation was zero zero now a b suppose a b is here so our point of rotation has also transferred so that's why we have to add a b here so this will be our expression that's what they were asking right they were asking us to write an equation satisfied by a b and this will be the equation with reference to zero zero it becomes a b now find the value of a and b okay we have to find the value of a and b now so we can take one point and zero zero is the best point right because it's the same transformation t so we can take the same image zero zero becomes zero one let me know zero zero becomes zero one zero zero becomes zero one okay so we will write here in place of y prime z prime we'll write zero one this is the image equal to p p is we'll have to look at again this is p right this one okay so i can copy this one square root 3 over 4 negative 1 fourth 1 fourth square root 3 over 4 you can use calculator also for this but i'm using the original one okay so y now we have tried y original y for 0 0 right 0 0 minus a minus b and then we have plus a 
B. So it becomes 0, 1 on the left side again and uh, E equal to square root 3 over 4, negative 1 fourth, 1 fourth. Okay, minus A, minus B, plus. And this AB can be written as 1, 0, 0, 1, an identity matrix multiplied by AB. Now, both of them have AB common. Yeah, it has minus, it has not. So we can write the one which, is, which does not have A uh, uh, minus first, we'll write this one. So 1 minus square root 3 or 4. Then 0 minus 1 fourth, which is minus 1 fourth. Then 0 minus minus 1 fourth, will be positive 1 fourth. 1 minus square root 3 over 4, which is equal to 0, 1. Now we have to find AB. So let's leave AB here and take this P, not P now, it is P minus identity matrix to the other side, which will be 1 minus square root 3 over 4, negative 1 fourth, 1 fourth, 1 minus square root 3 over 4 inverse multiplied by 0 1 equal to a b and now this will give us the values of a and b straight away by using calculator let me use my calculator and here i have done that you can see inverse of what i just got it comes out to be this and uh, let me memorize this because this has to multiply with 0 1 so this is not important this one is not important only second column is important so because of multiplying with this 0 the first one is 0 plus second one was 5 plus 2 square root 3 and it was multiplied by 1 over 13 then it was 0 1 over 13 again but this time 14 plus 3 square root 3 and that gives us the value a is the first one, 1 over 13, 5 plus 2 square root 3 and B is 1 over 13, 14 plus 3 square root 3. That concludes our solution for this video and uh, I hope you liked it. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and motivate me to make many more videos in future too. Thank you so much.